Here's a video reviewing the U11 pitchers, and we're going to focus on being safe, repeatable, and powerful. Our first pitcher up here, we'll get a look at him from the back. Nice set position, head on top of hips, on top of feet. And what we're going to start talking about is that his head tilts away. So you can see when he comes set that his head's covering the catcher. Now you can see the catcher, and then he'll bring his head back to cover up the catcher again. So this yellow line showing his head and torso tilting out, we want to try to eliminate that. Uh, he's doing a good job with his legs loading up and getting into the ground with the maroon line showing that. Nice bend in the legs and loading. But it's this yellow line that we want to try to avoid. So nice three-quarter arm slot. This picture here captures the tweak we want to make. His head starts on the solid yellow line, again covering up the catcher. And then his head drifts out to the right, kind of on the dotted yellow line. And then as he finishes here, he's back to the solid yellow line covering up the catcher. So if we can avoid that 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock and back to 12 o'clock and just stay consistent with his nose on the mitt, we think that'll help his consistency and help him throw strikes over a longer game. Again, we're drawing a few lines and talking about some things here, but this is a really good athlete and doing a great job uh, pitching and, and hitting the mitt in his bullpen. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the height difference that his head kind of goes down to this spot and then back up as he's finishing his delivery. And we'd like him to be either at the same level, allowing him to finish high to low or working down the slope. So we'll draw a few lines here and kind of point that out. This maroon line going across between the two trees, you can see his head dip in the center here. And then at finish, he'll come back up to that line that's tried to be at the same height. So again, minor little tweak. But a nice big tall guy, we like him instead of this trajectory throwing up where the arrow's at, and you can see the dotted lines here, that's the ball leaving his hand kind of in an upward direction. If we can get him to throw high to low, especially with his height, it'll make it very difficult for a batter. So the last look from his back, we're going to use the fence line just to give one more visual on the little head dip where his head will drop below the fence line and then back up. Uh, the yellow dots here along the top of the fence will be a good visual for you on this slow motion where his head goes down below the fence and then it'll pop back up above the fence at finish and we'd like to see him just working either flat to finish high to low or using the slope of the mound to kind of take his hips straight toward or slightly down to the catcher's mitt and the same thing with his hat and now on to pitcher two Again, from the back, coming set. Nice, smooth delivery to the plate. Kind of a leg lift and then a drop and a sink and then slides his leg out. Very effective, nice power position, elbows out. Good job firing his hips here. And you'll notice that he kind of finishes high or a little bit uphill. And just like our previous pitcher, we'd like him to work down the slope a little bit. So leg lift, and then down and out. And maybe get him to twist a little bit and show some back pocket, which we'll be able to see here. So we don't see as much of his back left pocket um, at the catcher as we'd like to see. Um, and you can see the visual point there of the yellow dot on his knee. We'd like to get at the knee or below the knee on our finish, so we're throwing from high to low, and he's not quite there yet. So we can get him to rotate a little more, working on finishing glove side in his bullpens, so throwing an outside pitch to a right-handed batter, that'd be pitcher glove side, that'll help him work on that finish. The style of these mechanics where the pitcher lifts his leg, sets the foot down, and then eases it out is very effective and great for balance and consistency it can stand in the way of some velocity. So we can get a little bit of a coil, a little bit of the load and, and use of his legs uh, in conjunction with a nice balanced motion, that'd be ideal. In this last shot, we show the yellow line coming down. And again, we'd like him at least flat as he goes toward home plate and then finishing over his front leg or the dotted line kind of shows it in an opportunity to use the slope and work high to low. Moving on to pitcher number three, there are a couple things that we talked about with him. The first one is fairly consistent with a, a number of the guys where he's finishing tall instead of throwing from high to low. 
The other thing you'll notice is his arm is working across his body, and we'd like it to work from that nice three-quarter arm slot here to a finish that's down near his plant leg knee. The other thing we'll talk about here is he's reaching behind his body, and when we reach back to throw, we want to keep the ball in the same plane as our chest. So on that yellow line, he's reaching a little bit behind, which will cause some tension on his shoulder. Here's another shot of him reaching behind, good three-quarter arm slot, and then if we can get him to rotate over and finish low, that'll make it harder on the batter with a ball that's coming from high to low across the plate. The last minor adjustment we made with this pitcher was that he was swinging his leg behind him, and that would stand in the way of him being able to make a pickoff move to third. So we talked to him about coming knee to knee and leaving his lead leg out in front of him a little bit, still allowing him to load, get into his legs, and generate some power. And the video shows him making a nice adjustment. Moving on to player four. Player four has a nice repeatable motion. Short arm action, the ball stays up by his ear. We'd like him to bring the ball down, back and up, lengthen his arm a little bit, and get him a little bit more velocity. Doing a nice job getting into his legs, as shown by the maroon lines there. You'll notice that he also doesn't finish across his body. So there he is at release, nice three-quarter arm slot. He's here at finish, and his arm's actually going to drift out to the right instead of finishing on the left side of his left leg. And watching this one more time, here he is in the three-quarter arm slot, and we'd like him to finish outside of his left leg. And so the way to work on that in a bullpen is to throw glove side pitches, which is pitching away to a right-handed batter. As we see him throw from the side, we can see that he throws a little bit uphill, and we'd like him to throw down the slope so the ball goes from high to low, crossing the plate at an angle. And from the front side coming at us, we can see his arm not finishing. So it comes forward and then out to the right, and we want it to finish on the far side of that left leg. One suggestion to help finish is to have the pitcher chase his glove with his throwing arm. The last thing for this pitcher to consider is that his leg action is a lift and lean, and we'd like him to consider really getting into his backside. There's a difference between a bent back leg and a back leg that's really into the ground in a powerful position to propel the pitcher. Moving on to pitcher number five. Pitcher number five has relatively short arm action, but he stands up at the end. The thing we'd really like him to focus on, like a lot of our pitchers, is to throw from a tall position to a low position, so to throw down the slope. And we really get a sense of that when we see him throw from this angle. This picture is used to show that if he drives his back knee into his front knee, helps his foot and back leg rotate forward, the red arrow is showing that'll help propel him into a good follow-through, again, from a high, good three-quarter arm slot and a nice follow-through, both safe for his arm and effective to throw down the slope at a down angle to the plate. These mechanics are very effective and they're very repeatable. The leg lift, leg drop, and then slide out is a good repeatable motion. However, it limits the ability to throw powerfully. So if we can get a little bit more of a back pocket shown to the catcher and coil, we think he might be able to add a little velocity and do so safely. Moving on to pitcher six. Pitcher six has a nice motion, nice long arm action. The one thing and probably the most important thing for us to help him with is that he's reaching behind the plane of his chest. So when he reaches back, he's actually reaching behind him, as shown in that picture, and that'll cause some strain on his shoulder. We can get just as much velocity and just as much on the ball reaching straight back and not putting undue stress on the shoulder. There are lots of positives in his motion as well. Um, another thing that we'd like him to take a look at is how he starts with his back leg bent in the set position, and then he actually comes up and straightens that leg out and then drops back down to go to the plate. I'd like him to consider just coming set in a natural, comfortable position and then making it one move. So dropping into his right leg and going to the plate. Dropping into that right leg with the coil, showing the back pocket to the catcher, and then going. Here you'll see that he kind of comes up to go down to go to the plate and instead could just gather and go in one step as opposed to two. 
we'll end with a great positive, especially for a taller pitcher, how he comes from a high three-quarter arm slot at the top dot and does a nice job getting down to a low finish. That's going to help the ball have great sharp down angle at the plate. Moving on to pitcher seven. Pitcher seven has sort of a unique set position with his elbow high in the air. No real issues there. He does a nice job coming down and up into a relatively standard slot. Does a nice job loading his hips there, and we'll show that in a still shot here in a second. We'd like to see him follow through a little bit more and finish down low glove side. Here's a shot of his shoulders pointed at the plate and his hips are turned nice and loaded for a good powerful position. However, the other side of that powerful position with the hips loaded is to get that right leg into the ground, really something to push off of. As we look at the pitcher from the side, there's some evidence that the backside isn't really forcing its way through to help propel the pitcher. He does do a very nice job of throwing from this three-quarter arm slot and finishing on the outside of that plant leg knee, the upper red dot where he releases the ball and the lower red dot where he finishes. And we see that again here. Nice job finishing to have that tilt on the ball as it approaches the plate. We'll conclude with a summary of some of the general topics we discussed with all of the pitchers. Most importantly, body language. When they throw a ball out of the zone in a bullpen, we want them to work on good body language, making it look to a batter like that pitch was part of our plan. In terms of arm health and safety, we had a few players reaching back behind the plane of their back and chest into this red area, kind of a danger zone for shoulder health. We want to avoid that. We talked about getting into your legs, loading up knee to knee, similar to the way we would when hitting, getting our hips and legs ready to drive velocity to the plate. We talked about throwing high to low, and this is independent of arm slot. Some guys are over the top, and some guys are out in the three-quarter hole. But regardless, we want to throw from high to low so we have a nice down angle, making the ball harder to hit. We talked about two moves to second base. This one, the glove side turn, would be more of a timing pick when the runner has a large primary lead. We want to be careful here that we don't start our front leg moving and then jump into the move. This would make it a two-part motion and should be called a balk by an umpire. The right way to do it is to just jump up, replace our feet, turning glove side towards second base. The other move is the inside move, where we sit quickly on our back leg and rotate. We sit quickly on the back leg and at the same time we slowly lift our front leg and with a continual motion move it up and through, stepping across our back leg towards second base. This is used for an aggressive secondary lead.